All right, in this video, this is the basic layout of the Google sidebar and check out the introduction to see what we're gonna be making. I'm not gonna be focusing on colors here so much, but instead these number globals here and I've already added those into a blank preset. And the reason why I have not shared this with you all yet in my free wallpapers folder is because of the icons, icons -y. If you load it up, it's not gonna look right and I'm going to explain that as we go through this entire series. Now the only number global here that maybe has, if you want to call it something special, is the width. If I come up here to edit that number global, I have the min set to zero and the max set to 100. I didn't apply any special numbers, if you even want to call them special, to any of these other ones. Obviously you don't want to make these things really big, like the icon size. You don't want to make the icon size like 2, 3, 4, 500 or anything like that. So maybe somewhere around 80, we'll see how it looks once we create the basic layout. Back in your items, let's add an overlap group. I'm going to call it sidebar. Inside of that sidebar overlap group, let's add a shape. I'm going to rename that shape to BG for the background of our car. It's going to be a rectangle. Go ahead and set the height to the height of your screen. So SIR height. Now we have a long skinny rectangle. Let's go ahead and make the width. This is where we're going to incorporate the width global. So for the width, I'm going to take the GV width, I'm going to divide it by 100. Then I'm going to multiply it by SIR width. Basically, whatever width is, if it's 80, 60, or whatever, when we divide it by 100, we're getting some percentage of the width of our screen. So backing out of that real quick, going over to globals, if we adjust our width now, if I go up to 100, the width of that rectangle is 100% of the width of our screen. But if I back it down to say 70, now it's 70% of the width of our screen. I want my entire sidebar to be over here on the left-hand side. So in that overlap group for sidebar, position, center left. Now it's on the left side of our screen. So now we're still inside of sidebar. We're gonna go ahead and create this top section that had a weather image and it had like a YouTube thumbnail, some subscribers and followers. We're not gonna create all of that here, but we're making the basic layout. So I'm gonna add another overlap group. I'm gonna call it top. And let's go ahead and add a rectangle for right now. And later on, this rectangle would be an image. But for now, a basic layout, I'm just gonna change this color so we can see it. And for this rectangle, now if we were to use the same formula we did for the card, and that was GV width divided by 100, some percentage of the width of our screen, this is gonna be the exact same width of our card. But I want to apply a little border, and the trick here, or one way to do this, is the following. I'm going to subtract two borders. And by me subtracting two, basically I'm gonna put a little bit on the left and the right hand side. Check it out, we have a little gap there on both sides. To emphasize this even more, I'm going to come over to globals and I'm gonna take that border and I'm going to increase the border, which is gonna give us some edges. So let's go back to the sidebar overlap group. We have the top, but before we proceed now, let's go ahead and add a stack group directly inside of sidebar. Now this stack group is going to stack the top card with all of our rows that have the apps that we wanna open or those animated pieces that we're gonna be creating later on. So what we need to do is we need to go ahead and take this top overlap group, let's cut it, and let's paste it inside of the stack group. Now nothing's gonna change there because we don't have anything to stack and plus this stack group that's going to have our weather images and all of those rows that you saw back in the introduction, it's gonna stack them. I wanna position this stack group at the top. So now it's up here. Now what I want to do though is apply that border to this image, but instead of us applying it to the image, what we can do, since we're right inside of here and this stack group is positioned at the top, let's take the top padding and let's apply the border to that. Now we have equal spacing on the left-hand side, the right-hand side, and the top. Now this top rectangle is way too small in my opinion. So I'm going to come to this top rectangle and let's make the height. I didn't use a number global for this. I'm just gonna make this 20% of the height of the screen. 20% of the height of the screen. There's our top rectangle. So we're back inside of that stack group with that rectangle that's now in there. And you can add whatever you want here. You know, do you want some apps up top? Do you want uh, your animated icons to be here? For now, I'm just gonna label them one, two, three, four, five, six. 
And for each one, we need an overlap group. Now bear in mind, ultimately what this one represents is going to be the first row that we have beneath this top image, whatever you want to add there a little bit later. Now if we go ahead and come in here and let's add a rectangle, let's set the width of this rectangle to be the same width as our card, not the border. Now you could do the border if you want, I'm going to make it the width of the whole card. And there's that code right there. Now you'll see that something shifted over, we're going to fix that right here in a second. Let's go ahead and adjust the paint real quick. Now I know I'm making these colors all different, but it's going to help you see the layout as we start applying these number globals later. Let's go back to that rectangle. And what I want the height of the rectangle to be, this is going to be a little bit crazy, but you'll see why this all works later on. Let's make the height of this rectangle the icon size. Make sure you pick icon size and not icon text size. Now to get everything centered back up, that's all about this stack group that we have here. If we go to the layer for the stack group, let's set this to vertical center. And now we have the correct border around our top image and everything's gonna be stacked vertically centered, but yet these rows still span the whole width of our card. Let's go back to globals real quick. If we apply a border, yes, that's going to change the way this rectangle looks, but it's not gonna change the green or the card, the white card. So to change that, we can make our card wider or narrower. Now also what I want to have in here is a little bit of spacing in between each row as well as this top card. To apply that, I'm gonna to go to that stack group, under layer, let's go to margin, and let's set the margin to vertical extra. That's this one right here, V-E-R-E-X-T. That's going to put a little bit of space in between all of our rows and ultimately we can adjust that global to make this look the way we want it to. So let's head back into that row one, this first row where we're gonna be able to open an app or have some icons animating or whatever. So there's that shape, that green rectangle. Let's add another shape in here. Let's do a circle. Let's make the circle width the icon size. And ultimately when it's all said and done, this is where we're gonna have our icon at. Now. What I like to do is I like to put my icon over here so I can take this shape position center left. So there's our icon over there. I'm gonna go adjust that color. And later on, we're going to have an icon right here. We need to add some text into this as well. So let's come back to that overlap group. Let's add some text. So my text here is just some sample text. We can open an app or we can animate some icons. Pick the font that you like. I'm going to set the size to my icon text size, Ico text size. And I'm gonna go ahead and set that paint to a darker color just so we can see it. Now, obviously that text is too long for that row. I mean, we're gonna put something like Play Store there or whatever, but what I can do is I can go back into the globals and I can make that text size a little bit smaller. Now, what I want to do with these two pieces, the icon and the text, back in sidebar, back in stack group, row one, I want to horizontally stack the icon, which is a circle right now in this text. So let's add another stack group. Let's cut and paste both of these into that stack group. And now that's just jacked up the whole preset, right? No, it's okay. A few moments ago, I added that circle over here to the center left, but if I come to that circle again and I go to position, since it is inside of a stack group, we don't have that option anymore. But if I come back to this new stack group that has the icon and the text, if I go to layer, horizontal center, and now if we take this entire stack group and we position the entire stack group to the center left, now we're gonna have it such that we're gonna have the icon and then the text will be right after it. Now what I also would like to have for this stack group is some spacing in between the text and the icon and what I'm using there is the optional global of H margin. So now we have a gap there. And then as bonus points, I'm actually taking that stack group, even though I have it centered left, I'm gonna apply a little bit of left padding to move this over to the right. And I call that left pad. That's that number global there. So now let's back out and let's go play with our globals. That's way too far to the right. Just a little bit of left padding. Let's adjust that here. Notice how that's sliding everything to the left or we can bump it over to the right. But basically that's moving just that little gap there. If we want to adjust the space in between the icon and the text, let's use the H margin. Now notice just the text is moving, but the left padding is remaining the same because we have two independent number globals. Now this is the basic layout for the most part, but sure we have to add in our divider bars if we want that. But if I just take this and I start copying and pasting, 
we can come back here in a future video and actually add the divider bars, you know, like you saw in the introduction where part of them I had them opening apps and I had a horizontal divider bar and beneath that I had some animated icons. But this is the basic layout. If I come back to width, notice we can adjust the width. Let's make the border smaller. Maybe we want to make the actual rows and the icons bigger. So let's go to icon size. Notice that's making the rectangles and the circles bigger because they have the same height or width applied to them. Maybe you want a little bit more spacing between each one. Let's go to ver ext. And then maybe you want to make the text a little bit bigger. So hopefully you are getting some idea on how all of these number globals work together. The only global that we haven't covered in this video is the div pad, but I think we're at a good stopping point for now. That div pad, when we start adding these horizontal divider bars, this uh, divider padding will allow us to put even more gaps in specific locations. But for now, this is good. Um, I hope you do see how stack groups and overlap groups where you have multiple groups inside of other groups that all works together real nicely. And ultimately when it's all said and done, when we start animating, uh, that's going to work real nice. Having all of these number globals to adjust to get the look that we want. And there you have it. That's the part one, the basic layout of the Google sidebar. And that's it for this video. I hope it helps.